What do you feel when you go to a place like Africa? And uh, uh, when I that? first go there, I feel a little apprehensive. The first time you went, yeah. How I'm old not... were you the first time you went to Africa? Um, I was an adult. I was a fighter. I was champ, but um. I was apprehensive because of all the rumors I've heard about Africa and stuff and all the things I've heard happen on, tele- happen on television. But when I went there, everything was just brilliant. It was beautiful. The people were beautiful. What kind I just of came back. I came back from Egypt right. like a week ago. What, were you, what kind of rumors did you hear before you went to Africa? Excuse me? What kind of rumors did you hear about the Africa? Like it's violent and stuff. And the, um, you got to be careful I stay in the hotel and not come outside the hotel. Did you go to Nigeria? And I've been to South Africa. Oh, you've been, been to South Africa? I've been to South Africa. I've been to Algeria. And I've been to Egypt. I think someone else probably don't remember right now. Now, Nigeria is where the party goes down. That's, that's Nairobi. That's what I hear. Is that Kenya? I thought it was Nigeria where they have the most pickpockets. Like, that's the most corrupt yeah, I place to get down to in the fucking in world. Nigeria. Honest, yeah. Yes. That's where it all goes down in Nigeria. I was just for it, you know. I didn't know if you had been there. Somebody Never tried to fuck there, with no, you. Never been there, no, no, no. But if you pay me, I'll go anywhere. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. <laughs> no, I don't care. You've been to Norway, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you guys Beautiful. were talking about the different kinds of people you've been in your life. Yeah. What is the, what is your reception now? Because back then you were heavyweight champ of the world, like the toughest guy ever. And now, like, not that, like, you're still him, but you're also, like, Older, a, 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 com- a comedy actor. Like, you're funny. Like, you're funny. Like, you're like a sweetheart no, now. No, the only thing is that's funny is that um, people who never saw me fight know who I am. From watching The Hangover and doing other things I've just done, you know, as outside of boxing, like actors. And so they know me from that, but they never see me box. Their parents have to tell them that I was a boxer before I was an actor or something. They have no idea. That's crazy. Is it Mike Tyson? Is it Mike Tyson the actor? No, he's not an actor. He's a boxer. They don't understand. You know, I watched all your fights. I get out of jail. I'm put in a halfway house. I'm working on a car wash as a host. And I'll never forget, I came up hot for a UA. It was my second one in the halfway house, and I wasn't allowed rec time. So I missed the the Buster Douglas fight. Mm -hmm. It's like God didn't let me watch. They didn't want you to watch. They didn't the want Buster you to cry, Douglas baby. Fight. And the next day, I was fucking like, you know, hey, this was twenty years ago. We could talk about this shit now. You know what I'm saying? They didn't this want you to cry. My, I, I'm, like the next day it was the weirdest thing. Like God didn't let me watch my main dog fucking do his thing. How crazy is that? That's why I said you and I have similar lives, Mike, in a lot of ways. But I know, I know that every three years somebody came into our life that opened our eyes a little more. My wife, this one I met in 2000, you know, I met this white chick, she's from Tennessee. What the fuck does she know where we're from? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she watched the motherfucking Sopranos. And, and one night, you know what this bitch said to me, Mike? I fell in love with you? No, no. I was, no. Coked, I was coked up. And she said something. I fall in love with the motherfuckers that call me out because they see something that nobody else does. You know what this motherfucker said to me one night in the middle of my coke out when we got back? She goes, I've been dating you for eight months and I could tell that you were raised without a mother. At that time, I I had two options. I could have picked her up and thrown her out the fucking window, (laughs) but I went with option B because she broke me down like no other motherfucker broke me down in eight months. You know, that's why I cherish my wife because in one sentence, she changed me as a man. How I had a fucking act from now on. I wasn't acting like a person. She said I was missing somebody's love. You ever have somebody say some like shit like Fuck that? No. <laughs> My wife, what did my wife do? My wife just said, we're going to do this. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. We're going to be doing some movies. We're going to write some plays. We'll be able to... I ain't saying no what I was going to do in my life. I said, what the fuck am I going to do? And here you are doing podcasts. Yeah. I mean, I'm listen. making plans to build a fucking stadium. Listen. You're sober. It comes or you lot. look it good. It comes a lot to do with luck. Trust me. I'm a great believer in luck. Great believer. I believe in luck, but I also believe that we got to get ourselves to that place to be lucky. No, I believe the harder you work, the more lucky you are. You know, 
Yeah, you really I'm, believe that? Yeah, I work so. real hard, and I believe, yeah. I believe that's why I get the edge, because I work hard as in everyone that was in my life. I mean, when I went down to your studios and you were showing me all the things you had planned, I'm like, when the fuck is Mike Tyson going to fucking find time to do all these things? I mean, I had no idea about the Egypt trip. I mean, you don't stop moving. Yeah, so stay alive. I'm the kind of guy. Right You're there. a shark. You're a fucking yeah, shark like moving, me. I'm yeah. useless. I'm useless. You work seven days a week. Do you not? Even if I complain, it's, let me just go because I'm useless if I don't work. And when you're not working, you're thinking about the next fucking move. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a really, um, that, that can start depression and stuff. What's that? Not doing it, being idled. I'm always thinking about the next move. My mind, I could be looking at you, talking to you. That's why I need that. I smoke that reefer for two reasons. It's a, it's the only thing I have from my past. It's a teddy bear from my past when I was Jose Antonio. Mm -hmm. And it was there when I was Coco. And it's there now when I'm Joey Diaz. You know what I'm saying? Like, Coco must have been a motherfucker. Coco huh? was. Coco was son. That name is Coco. Coco was a, my, a name given to my, me by my father before he died because of how white my skin was. So they called me the inside of a coconut. Yo, I didn't like it for a long time. But I didn't like Jose Antonio either. Jose Antonio was a cunning motherfucker. He didn't do drugs, but he fucked with people's heads <laughs> at an early age. You know what I'm saying? Jose Antonio was a stone-cold hustler. Jose Antonio was a kid that from the age of 7 to 16, he didn't care about pussy. He cared about how to make money and get out of his mom's grasp. Like, the more I could stay away from my mother and her giving me money, the better we were off. We had an understanding because if I took a 20 from my mother, I had to take her bullshit. Even though I still took a 20 from her from time to time, I had to take her bullshit. But I wanted to be independently free. I delivered newspapers. I sold flowers on the corner of 86th Street. I robbed trains. I robbed punks and knocked on people's door and sold the punks for a dollar a piece. I was a one-man fucking I-need-to-make-money machine. If I went to Chinatown Lee, you want a T-shirt from Chinatown, a Bruce Lee T-shirt? Yeah, it cost twelve fifty. No, it don't. It costs nine ninety nine. No, that's the shitty one. It cost twelve fifty. I'll prove it to you. I would make three fifty on the transaction. I learned how to jump into Converse and jump into dumpsters. And I would have to get the right sizes of the shoes because you can't pull a six and an eight and try to sell the motherfuckers for the small 13. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.